now you're gonna hang out. Now that we're doing the video, you're gonna hang out with me. Yeah, now that we're going, she's, she's like gonna, completely annoyed. She, she needs the FaceTime, avoiding the me the whole time. She's like, oh. Well, here <clears> we are with Josh of sixty eight. Do you go by sixty eight or is it they are sixty eight? Sixty eight. Cool. Uh, when you're when you're visualizing it, it's always apostrophe six and eight. Like but, the year. Um, yes, because it is a reference of the, of the year, but the uh instagram and um facebook you can't do apostrophes so we came up with they are they 68 are i always in my head was like going. we are <clears throat> yeah that's a that's not us yeah no i found that out um but uh <laughs> yeah they are 68's our social world but go ahead and follow that right now <laughs> They are 68, and you can also like, yeah, we're just gonna knock that out. Snap, whatever you do, I don't go ahead, smash (laughs) that like button on this podcast if you like it, and subscribe to the Lamb Goat podcast uh, or the Lamb Goat YouTube. That'd be dope if you're listening to us on a platform audio only that you can, uh, what do you do, uh, rate. And share? I have no idea. Yeah, I think you can rate and share your podcast on pretty much I think anything. You can share so. anything. Yeah. So go ahead and just do that, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll still be here. So it's all good. You should say that stuff after so that they can listen to it and go, yeah, that was good. Yeah, but see if and I throw it in. It. But if I throw it in, like as we're talking, <clears> they can't. It's just like no. Subliminal. But think about it. They'll be like, they'll be like, oh, let me stop this real quick. Go share it and like it and all this stuff, and then they may not come back to it. Well, we'll we'll come back around to it at the end. I think you're what you're are you right. Doing, dog? She just wants to sniff. Man. Literally has nothing to do with me until those cameras come on. I see how you're gonna be. So you guys are currently on a little tour, a little stint mm. here um, with the '68. What is the reference to the year? Is it a special uh, reference or? My father had a '68 Camaro. I was wondering if it was about a car. <clears throat> And um, he's passed away now, but he, uh, uh, it was a cool car. And um, I wanted a, I wanted a, a name that could kind of be global, like kind of worldwide. And, and I liked the idea that if, no matter what country you're in, visually, everyone has the same numbers, mm, I mm-hmm. think, as far as I'm aware, close enough. And so no matter what country you're in, if you see apostrophe six and eight, it's, you may you may say different words, right? You may call it, but but visually it's Mentally, all the same. It's, the it's same. not it's not like something that has to be translated or anything. So interesting. So that and then the the '68 Camaro that my father owned was, was just and I like the I like the yeah just everything kind of made sense to to make it that that name. Um, I I uh, I've been in bands prior to this and uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a couple bands. Oh wow, um, man, weird. And uh, they weren't um, you know. They're not. They're not for the masses. Um, and uh, I mean, sixty eight is not really for the masses either. But sixty eight is way closer to something that, like, I think my dad would have really right. been stoked on because he, right. he he loved rock and roll. And, and so, like did he pass after you started sixty eight? Uh, or no, I'm sorry, before. That's yeah, what I before, meant to say. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why I said after, but yeah, yeah. So it was just kind of a. It, it, it was a few things that sort of lined together to make sense to 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 call the band that. And yeah. Um. I just liked how short it was. Like, For some reason, I was thinking Mustangs. When I heard, um, when I see the it's 68, Camaro, it's like, but, yeah, uh, but yeah. in my head, the Mustang. You know what I mean? I don't know why. I mean, as long as you're thinking cool car, I don't really Muscle care. cars, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you're from Atlanta. True. Something that's been really, really on my brain, your opinion about it specifically, you're from the birthplace of Chick-fil-A. True. Have you tried the Popeye sandwich yet? The Popeye sandwich? Yeah, the chicken sandwich. That's like the big thing going on. I don't even know. I oh my tried goodness, that. Josh, come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, I do very little fast food. That's not true. Um, <sighs> but I'm gonna say it. Uh, yeah, I other than Taco Bell, way too much. I do very little fast food. Um, this day and age, because I, I, but. I'll have to try the Popeye chicken. I mean, not really. I was only going to necessarily ask you, like, which side of the fence you were on, just because you are <clears> from, like, technically the birthplace of I Chick-fil-A. I um, We, I think we invented Chick-fil-A. Um, we also invented Waffle House. Really? We also invented Coca-Cola. So, you're welcome. Um, I was addicted to that for so long. Me too. You're not now? I go off and on. I'm completely off. I'm off now. But, like... I'm super... I, I, I haven't had it in probably three, four years. Any... I mean, all I ever drank was Coke. Oh yeah, that's yeah. All that, that's exactly how I that's was. All that needs to be, but um, yeah, I actually quit because when you're born in Atlanta, you're bottle fed Coke Cola till you're <laughs> till you can chug it yourself. Um, and, just put a uh, nipple on like the glass. Yeah, bottle yeah. And just give it yeah. to you. 
Is uh yeah, and and I mean our whole city's. Coke, oh yeah, yeah. You know, Everything's so. got big red. Everything. Yeah. Uh, the Super Bowl when it happened some time ago in Atlanta, it was a Pepsi sponsored thing. I I remember and that and was like, like what is that mind. all about? And they're like, what is that even doing here yeah. in the city? It's uh, kind of like the Chick Fil A Popeye thing going on right now. You should yeah. look into that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no. Uh, speaking of Coca Cola, yeah, I gave it up for like a year and. Then, you know, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who constantly only drinks yeah, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Shout out, Kyle. Um, but he constantly just only drank Coca-Cola. So hanging out there, I was like, all right, well, I drink it. It's not like I don't drink it. But I was yeah. avoiding it for that year. Right. And then uh, I started to drink it again. And then slippery slope, you know, oh, yeah. it's just sucking It'll it down. Get you. Yeah. And it got to the point where I was literally just like, I wouldn't even savor it. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, yeah, get it right. in, get it in, get it in. Yeah. It was really so. <clears throat> I was on tour. I drank it hard all, all the time. That's all I ever drank. Well, on tour is readily available. Yeah, like everywhere. Well, it's like one of the things you get for free sometimes <laughs> True. Uh, at venues. If you're not drinking um, alcohol, and you and you don't have yeah, I, I don't drink alcohol. So so Coca Cola was the the next thing that would Vice. be free. Um, sometimes uh, and so anyway. I was actually on tour with Every Time I Die, we were in Europe, and um, my friend Daniel was drumming at the time for them, and <clears throat> we'd always hang out and go get coffee or whatever, and um, I don't really, we didn't plan it or anything, but just sort of with about a week or two weeks uh, went by, and I kind of just realized, like, well, I haven't I didn't had a Coke, like, because um, we drink coffee, and then um, I like sparkling water, and so they would have that readily available in, like, Germany and stuff like that, and so didn't even think about it, but just didn't have any coke and then um i got home it was like right before christmas and i got home and just never came up and then one time i remember it was january something and someone was like oh you want a coke and i and i remember thinking like huh do i do i really want it do i am i doing this like because now it's been i don't know that like three weeks to four weeks or so I'm like am i gonna do a thing or am i just gonna not do a thing and so i was just kind of like i said no i don't <laughs> want a coke and then um yeah and then i and then and then I, I just slowly but surely from Phase time to time, out. I would like people would uh, see me and be like, are you losing weight or whatever? And I'd be like, maybe. That's the craziest thing about not drinking Coke. And therefore, I just kept not drinking yeah. it. Because <laughs> I was I like, noticed. I'm losing weight without doing anything. Right, I'm like, just living my life. That's nice. So yeah, I, I haven't drank it in a few years. but <clears throat> I, gave um, up, uh, I gave up alcohol <clears throat> for an entire year mm-hmm. just to see if I could. Sure. Um, that drastically changed how I drank alcohol afterwards right but um no man um <laughs> but i also gave up coke and i was like damn i'm, lo- I'm losing like 30 pounds at yeah the same right time. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah i'm not doing anything different i right. wasn't active i wasn't eating any different but i just was drinking water and like you were saying coffee and everything i don't drink any of that stuff anymore really? I, just, I just drink water i'll have a beer <clears throat> every Dude, now this and is then, so but... strange i don't drink coffee really I don't. So you just said you were drinking coffee in Europe. No, I know, but here's the thing. When in Rome with every time I die. I no, 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 no. Not when in Rome with every time <laughs> I die. Uh, that was three or four years ago. I, I don't know my dates very good, but I, I would guess three years ago, maybe four. Uh, a year ago, we're in August, right? Yeah, yeah. late August. A year ago, last year, August, I quit coffee, uh, caffeine. Caffeine Just general? caffeine, all of it. And How's that going? I, And same thing, I kind of just wanted to go a year. And just, you know, I like, I like trying to improve oneself, little right. baby steps here and there, but, um, I drink way too much caffeine all the time. And, um, so I was like, I want to just go a year and see if I feel much better mm-hmm. or if I don't. And, um, yeah. And the general consensus, I feel way better. And yeah. so I've, I've actually given up caffeine too. So I'm about as vanilla as it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, I had a Coke. I will say this. I did have, I split a Coke with my, my girlfriend and, um, uh, I could feel like just, I could, I got hotter. Sure. You know yeah, I, mean? yeah, like, yeah, I got sure. hotter and I was like, damn, this is what everyone was talking about when I was slamming <clears throat> Cokes, but yeah. I was just slamming them so much. It it's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. When I quit doing, uh, caffeine, I mean, um, uh, so when I stopped Cokes, I was still drinking coffee and I mean, I, Coffee is one thing. I was drinking monsters and Red Bulls. Yeah, and all, no, I don't. I can't that, mess with any yeah, of that. Yeah, I was. I was messing with it hard. But uh, <laughs> so when I quit Coke, I didn't really have too much of a withdrawal or anything because I was still just down in caffeine hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, 
But when I quit caffeine, I mean, it was headaches and oh, stuff. Like people were like, "Oh yeah, two weeks to a month." I'm like, I, I think like three months in, I was still just like not really? fun to be around and like real irritable and yeah. just like you know didn't know if like life was worth it and stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's a Is real, this real life without anything. You know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and so and so I would just be, but again, I'd kind of already set in my mind I want to try a year, and so now I'm at the year, and I feel so much better that I am pretty much committed to just being like cool i'm down with not doing caffeine um which is the other thing some bands get for free when you're so so basically right. anything you would normally get for free i'm like no thanks no uh, thank you do you have any uh pellegrigio <laughs> yeah, or sparkling exactly. water maybe exactly could i be more difficult and get something crazy but uh just put on your writer <clears throat> going forward you know yeah um that's what i do but uh you know that's assuming we get our writer, writer. But, uh um uh, what was i gonna say when i'm um uh oh <clears throat> now that it's been a year um like if i'm in somewhere really really nice and there's like tiramisu i might have a tiramisu because there's like caffeine in right it, i think i honestly don't know how much <clears throat> caffeine i intake now because i never ever really drank um coffee or I, I and for some reason when red bull and monster and all that stuff started coming out <clears throat> something in me was yeah, like yeah. That's not good. I don't think you need anyone to tell you it's not good. Yeah, I, I was like, I think, I was like I think why do you need know. to be jacked up even more <laughs> than you already are? It's like, I think somewhere deep inside, I think most of us know yeah. the things you They don't come in small. Avoid. You know, like five-hour energy, I get it. But even then, I, I don't mess with that either. But the five-hour energy comes in like a little thing. Yeah, right. The monster can. I've never seen a monster can like a Coke can. It's always like Dude, a I tall boy. down those like big fatties too. Yeah. And, I mean, because you do like... Uh, like we were on warp tour a couple of years and those are sponsored rock by stars Monster. and all that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're just like it's it's free and, and i'm broke so it's like of course uh, you it's know. liquid and uh but uh yeah i um i feel much better i i really do um do you eat healthier like <laughs> no <just> food wise? <laughs> um, <laughs> no it's <laughs> usually how it goes we yeah. just drink good but we i uh that's my next step i like i said every little bit i want to try to implement little just i like the idea of improving oneself, you know, um, but <clears throat> uh, I do need to eat eat a lot better. Like I said, I I, I do Taco Bell pretty hard when I yeah, but I mean, like that's but... not that bad. Out of all the fast foods, that probably is like the healthiest one. No, it's got to be kind of up there. There's nothing. I mean, you're eating no. cardboard taco shells and stuff like that, but, yeah, you know, yes. other than that... I sure don't know, but I, again, you know that, like, little inner voice you're talking <laughs> about that said, like, Monster's probably not very good, like, something's like... See, my, so when I pull up to Taco Bell, I'm like, it's not the worst one I could be at. I guess it depends on what you get. You can probably get, like, some bean and something, something, and it's probably, like, whatever, but I don't get that. Well, I know a lot of bands on tour that have, like, um, <clears throat> either vegetarian or vegan people in their band. Yeah, right. Taco Bell is big for them. <clears throat> is that something that you're going to maybe try to go to? Because <clears throat> the more I even look into anything and everything, and the more people I have on this podcast, yeah, you know, like, uh, Pete was... Uh, Pete from Roaring Never and Ether Coven was uh, big in, I mean, he's a vegan. Okay. So like we had a big discussion about it, even off the podcast about, cause he feeds his dog a vegan diet too. Right. Right. And his dog's like 16, 15 years old. <clears throat> so we kind of went back and forth on that. That's something that I like teeter with in my head, sure. but I don't know I, if I could do it. I think, I think I'm a future vegan. Um, I'm not like, I'm from the South, but I'm not one of those like, you know, Meh, you know, yeah. barbecue forever. Because uh, uh, I'm not. I know that things change, and you you just learn more. You know, you learn more about the garbage that you're putting in your body, and and the you know the drawbacks and stuff. And so I'm sure I need to eat better. And I and and like working out, like I don't do any of that. Yeah. And, I, and I need to. That's definitely something that's you know on the to do list or whatever. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, it's funny. I'm. This is. This is surely one of the longer discussions of yeah. of, of where you're eating. Your uh, <laughs> like, you're just this is like under some, under the under the surface. Josh talk. This right is now. just a weird like uh like oh life tips. Uh, yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's you know it's funny. I'll I'll do a whole tour and ne and none of this will come up because I'm not like you know evangelically <laughs> like you know how like you meet some vegans and right. stuff that are so evangelical about it. Uh, I try not to like bother anyone with you know my world but um but yeah since it did come up i yeah. i've um caffeine free since since last year and well uh, that's good and my next steps are probably eating better and 
like exercising or doing something. <laughs> I just started. Um, I've never really been one to work out, especially cardio wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you're. You and I are roughly like in the same ballpark as ages go. Yeah. So, um, two months ago, I can't believe I'm going to say this on here, but two months ago I started running because, uh, as you're well aware, Lamb Goat is filled <clears throat> with nice people on the message board and comment yeah. section. <laughs> so, uh, I was never like a a big dude. Mm-hmm. in my own eyes yeah yeah sure sure <laughs> yeah but now that i'm like on the internet and on video and stuff like that now that you're super famous right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, and i got the clout uh <laughs> they've pointed out to me that i am not <laughs> as thin as i thought so you know i said in I my in, in my inner monologue i was like well i'm gonna them. i've always wanted to be sure more healthy and yeah and more in shape yeah yeah, yeah. So i was like i'm gonna start running so i've been running for like the last two and a half months that's cool I did five <clears throat> miles yesterday, which was insane for me. That's like, cool. That's the in this Florida heat. That's I know. That's five miles to like 10 actually. Miles. I ran from here, this house, mm-hmm. to where the venue's at. Oh, that, right on. So it was far. That's a hike. Yeah, but I, uh, I don't know anything about that world. I, I I've done little bits here and there, like if we're on a tour and and they they do it all, mm-hmm. like I might try to join them or whatever. <clears throat> but I've never. How do I put this? I've never exercised to the point where I felt the benefit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's 100%. always bummer. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, and, I, and I know for a fact, like scientifically speaking, it has to cross a point where it's uh, it's no longer bummer now. You start feeling the, the, right. the energy. and the, Right. Um, I know that mathematically that's the outcome, but I've never made it to that point. I've only made it to the point where Damn, even sorry. even if I'm like two weeks in, three weeks in, I'm like everything's sore for oh, yeah, so yeah. long that's... and I'm so tired. And, <clears throat> and, uh, and so I know I need to like break through that at some point. That's you know? why I think I – because I, <clears throat> I, I used to – like work out. I used to be in gyms sometimes and I would lift weights and stuff, but mm-hmm. I was never running. Cardio was not my thing. Right. So this time around I was like, well, cause you gain weight when you, when you, you know, lift and do other things oh, yeah, cause yeah. you add, you, you add muscle. So you yeah, kind of yeah. gain weight. So I was like, I'm going to just lose weight. Yeah. Right. And then I'll work on lifting and stuff like that. Makes so, sense. um, but yeah, what, where are you at? Work. How are you feeling? Are you, you, oh, man, you're I like, mean, oh, this is great, or you're like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm always and, tired. And you get addicted to it, to running. <clears throat> See, I've never done that yeah. yet. Um, <laughs> it's, I did. Always, it's always, just, I mean, just like, uh, oh, it'll definitely check you. I like, when you start it, it today. when you when you start, it'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. check you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I did like this little app, the Nike Run Club app. Okay. And I was honest with the with the app, and I put sure, in yeah, like right, right. I don't do anything, and I'm heavy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what should I do? Well, Lamb Goat says you're heavy. Yeah, Lamb Goat did, and that's probably why I was thinking <laughs> that. But, uh, but anyway. I'm Lamb Goat heavy. <laughs> so <laughs> Lamb Goat heavy could be pretty pretty small. You meanwhile, know? everyone on there is probably way heavier than me. But <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, I started doing it, and I it was brutal. Like literally yeah, brutal. Yeah. But now, like I said, five <clears> miles, I could do like a mile, not even sweating, and it's like crazy. It's only been two months. A friend of mine's hard into health, and like he swears that like it, it, it like you said, it's addictive. Like he'll wake up, like if he can't physically run for whatever reason, sometime like it'll he'll have like like he just he he's he it's a joy. Like he wakes yeah. up and he's like, I've got it's something that I want to do. He wakes up at like 4 a.m. if it needs to do it. And I'm, but I'm, but he says, he claims it's because of the, the, the pure joy of running and the addiction of running and all the good stuff that you, mm-hmm. that, 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 I guess is good to be addicted to, you know, all the, all that stuff. Um, so he's Endorphins like, and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah. So he's pumping. like, Oh yeah, man, if I, if I, if I got to wake up at four in the morning to make it happen, it, it's a joy. I love it. You know, and I'm just like, I have never been to that point. No, see, I love sleeping. <clears throat> Dude. So I love sleeping and I don't, I, there's uh, so many times where I can't get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I'll run, and this is the dumb part on my behalf because I am in the heat. Mm-hmm. I'll run like midday. So oh, I'll just man. be like a tomato when I get home. You know? I know I'm from Georgia, so it's not that, but it's a big difference between yeah. Georgia and Florida. And, and I can't even believe the way it was today. I mean, now it's raining, so it feels good out there. But yeah. I got out of the van. The van's all freezing cold. We have it as yeah. cold as it can be. And when I got out, I was like, oh, it's so thick out here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it was rough. But, yeah, good on you for running in the heat. I, I'm trying it out, man. You know what I mean? I've gotten this far, so it'll be interesting to see how far and how long I can keep, keep it doing up. it. Do you do it every day? 
No, Every other uh, it does, I'm on like a program. Okay. So it's like you have rest days and you do other kind of things. Gotcha. If you, if I don't run for like two days, yeah, that next run is like hard, the worst. And I and then like say I did five miles yesterday. If I don't run for th- two days, I could barely do a mile and a half. Whoa. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like crazy. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you should definitely get into it. I mean, it, you will. lose weight like yeah, yeah. crazy too, right? Uh, and especially you're not putting i mean you're putting like food in there but not like yeah liquid calories and other things like that like sugar and stuff do you eat sugar yeah that's not a bad thing yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard yeah i've tried to give that up but i'm a candy I, uh, guy i'm a candy guy chocolate guy i like um i like chocolate i uh like i said i don't eat healthy um <clears throat> so um i i'm better than i used to be but only because of just well because sometimes when you're broke you just have to eat like yeah, shit. garbage you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. uh um but uh but i still am better than i used to be because it used to like so used to so obviously when you're on tour you you stop at gas stations all the time no matter what and all and every single time i used to have to get something candy or something because you get bored too yeah you're just bored and you're just like i gotta eat and it's like this is something to do for the next you know 40 seconds <laughs> it's not long walk around this like yeah, lit place yeah, it, and and it's so, probably you're probably stopping a lot of times in the middle of the night Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, I mean, I, but I used to eat all Reese's peanut butter cups and all the, all the candy and stuff. But, um, now I try to stick more with, you know, whatever nuts. And if, if I get a, a bar of some sort, like mm-hmm. a, like a protein bar or something, you know, which I, might be better. I don't know. But <clears throat> well, when you're, when you're working out or not work, I shouldn't say working out, but when you're more active, like I'm not on a diet yeah. or anything like that, but I'm more conscious of like what I'm eating as far as like how it will affect me running the next day. Yeah, right. So that's... Well, playing shows every day is, you know, um, again, I don't eat healthy, but like even just like if I... If I realize I haven't drank water much that day, like Mm -hmm. maybe we're just driving that day and I just haven't come around to drinking water, um, the show, in my mind at least, suffers the next day because... I'm like dehydrated. feeling dehydrated or whatever. Because you typically on an average show, like I'm spitting all the time. Like I just well, you're also a pretty so sweaty much. guy when you're up there too. Sure. You're yeah, moving yeah. around a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my mouth, I'm just always spitting, spitting whatever. And I can tell if the day before I haven't drank any water uh, or very little, um, my mouth's all dry. I'm not and, I, and that's so very rare for me. And so, um, uh, yeah, I say all that to say like I can, eating healthy is definitely there's wisdom yeah. behind it <laughs> i would imagine so have you always not drank alcohol is that like a thing that you've always no, done you i just, just kind of gave I, it up at some point yeah um i gave it up at some point and cool. uh i found my i'm i'm better to be around uh and and uh, and i just don't, i don't mind being sober you know yeah. i mean i don't mind uh i like i'm not very good at not being in control mm mm-hmm. mhm which maybe were you all and like, uh, the, the I'm not trying to be out of line, but were you like getting wasted? Well, I mean, you know, there's uh, there's a long, I've had a long life. Uh, well, you're a road, so, you're a road dog, so to speak, <clears throat> too. Yeah, you know what I mean? I've been so, around for a minute, but um, yeah, those phases where you know you 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 know you're young or whatever, and like I'm talking like middle school, high school and stuff, you know, and but um, there was enough stuff happening around me, um, a few pretty tragic things and then a few things that just i could sort of see the common thread so for for me myself i just found it easier to and i started my first band in in high school and i was just kind of one of it was in that area where i was just like i i like i like doing music i want to put my i think the bottom line is i have a very addictive personality yeah this kind of goes back to coke and coffee someone watching this that's like coke who cares about coke is like well i i mean i really do have a, a very kind of like addictive personality so i find that <clears throat> as long as i keep shoving that towards something productive like art or whatever um i find mentally i can sort of navigate w- the waters a lot easier it's also um, a lot more beneficial for you to <clears throat> focus that on yeah, that. Yeah, and of... like anyone around me, um, I think benefits from it as well. Um, but you know, when I when I get into something a little bit, everything is a slippery slope, whether it's good and art or mm-hmm. whether you know, for me. And so, yeah, I just um, through this like pretty semi chunk of time of my life, enough things was happening around that I was like the common thread wasn't anything that I 
felt like was beneficial for me. So, um, so yeah, I was just sort of like, I want to do this. I want to do music, and mm-hmm. I want to, and I want to. I like being kind of in control, or at least at least the thought of a control, or at least pretending to be in control, and then like, and then uh, I like you know remembering everything and knowing <laughs> where you know I, I like it. I, I enjoy. I try my best to enjoy yeah. life. You know so. That's just for me, you know. Yeah, I had a, I had <clears throat> almost a similar conversation with Keith uh, from Every Time I Die <clears throat> about because he also, I mean, it was very well documented <clears throat> that he was a party guy. Yeah, and uh, it was also documented that he was like allergic to alcohol. So of course I asked him about like you know that what sure. all that was like, and he did give up drinking for a, <clears throat> a yeah. time, and then I found out that the time was like very small. <laughs> it was like yeah. three four months or something. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. One thing that I did notice when I stopped drinking, because I stopped, I mean, I don't, you might have been much younger. I stopped <clears> drinking, <throat> like, again, like two, three years ago, uh, regularly, I should say. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. have a beer every now and then and sure. it's be okay. <clears throat> but um, it was tough for me to be around people in that scenario for a while. Right. Yeah. Cause it was I could imagine like, that. Everyone's annoying. <clears throat> you know, oh, yeah, yeah, everyone. yeah. If you're not, if you're, if you're not doing anything and everyone else is doing something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, fuck. Annoying is a good word. Uh, what's funny, so I'm, I'm a little bit introverted by nature. Um, and so I, I, if I, if I, if up to my own ability, I probably wouldn't be out like gallivanting much anyway. I'd rather just kind of be in the corner like working on art or something. But, uh, but on tour you're sometimes forced to go mm-hmm. out to whatever and um and uh i find myself <clears throat> you almost have to kind of lean into it like if you're sober and everybody else is not and mm. they're just getting like you almost have to like um cuz cuz you just you know what's going you know where it's all going you know they're going to get this is, far from your face yeah. you're going to smell gonna, their breath yeah they're going to tell you how much they love you they're yelling they're at like, you at right here like dude you're a band let me tell dude, you're, you know, and you're yeah. just like, this nice. Oh, I can only imagine, Thank like, you. you dealing with drunk fans every night, too. Well, That's there's the whole a little bit of that, but even friends. And oh, yeah, stuff. yeah, for just, sure. I know, but, like, fans. it gets so funny, You too. know, like, that's their one moment to be with you, and they're, like, <clears throat> yeah. you know, 13 sheets to the wind or whatever. And... It can it can be fun, but, uh, yeah, I, um, it, it's cool because um, when I drank Coke, I was always the designated driver since I didn't drink anyway. And so I would be at these bars and people would just buy me Coke all the time. Uh, now I don't drink Coke. And so it gets weird. Like, what do I get you? And I'm like, chicken wings. You know? <laughs> like, and so I've like up, I've, uh, I've upsold them, you know, right, so, right, right. Uh, you can keep your Coke. I'll just give me some, give me some food. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, I've been doing it long enough that, um, you know, being the odd man out or whatever's never bothered me. So for, uh, but you do almost some like, cause there's times where I just can't, I'm like, I'm not in the frame of mind to deal with this right now, you know? So, uh, but, um, but typically I'll just, if I know I'm going out to a bar or something anyway, and, and I'm like, well, let's just lean into it. Let's yeah. just like, I'll, I'll egg them on, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, if you, like, if you, you can make do that, yeah, if you yeah. can make it fun in your own <laughs> yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like you can play a game with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, it becomes a whole nother thing. Yeah. And I'm like the only one with like clear footage that right, I can like right. blackmail them later. They, can't even, they don't even remember it. <laughs> times. But, um, so <clears> we're, we're going to, we're, I'm going to try to pivot it a little bit, even though this is great. Uh, <laughs> We were talking in the car on the way over here. <clears throat> your your mom was working for McCormick Spot Spices. Yes. And I was curious, um, because like I told you, I've started cooking more recently. Nice. Plus, not trying to eat healthier. I'm just trying to eat at the house. Yeah, sure. And um, <clears throat> so, what was her, like, was she like working with the spices? Was she, so, is she like a culinary person? I know you said you weren't, but. She, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, she was like in the accounting world okay. or something of it. So she worked in a building <clears throat> and I might have this real, real wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm close. She worked in a building with other office folks and then attached was this gigantic warehouse mm-hmm. of what I would presume is spices and yeah. things and whatever. <clears throat> um, but yeah, she, uh, I mean, I will say as a company, they seem to be phenomenal. Um, she had nothing but good things to say about them. She's retired now via the company. And, uh, but I, I grew up with just, you know, a myriad of spices, <laughs> like all things you've heard of, things you haven't. And, and, you know, I just, um, 
my mom would make dinners and stuff, but I, I never thought of her necessarily as like trying these crazy things. But <clears throat> because we had them always around the house, mm-hmm. um, you know, I would just, oh, let me try throwing this on there. And mm-hmm. that, that tastes like garbage. Let me try, try, you know. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I uh, now fast forward um, to to where I am now. I I have, you know, I have a spice rack full of stuff that, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of people, maybe even chefs that know a thing or two would be like, why would you? Those would never go together. Right. I'm like, well, they do for me in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your? Yeah, that, that, that was one of my. That was one of my questions that I actually had was, uh, was your like kitchen always a smelling like crazy with the spices and like what is your favorite like combination with spices? You know what um, I mean? Because now you're saying you're like putting stuff together that's like well, not, not supposed so, to be. Well, so like, uh, well, um, it's it's so. My my parents always provided dinner and stuff, but I never thought of them as it wasn't necessarily like, or at least in my mind, it wasn't like it wasn't like chefs where they were right. like cooking all these crazy. You know what I mean? Like like I think like Thursdays we had what we called find it fix it, which is just like you go in find it and you fix it right. and you clean it up, and then <laughs> Fridays was almost almost essential like always uh, burgers and the hot dogs mm-hmm. grilled out and thing. You probably had an <clears throat> order out evening as well. Yeah, well, um, we kind of lived in the woods. Um, we lived uh, real deep in the woods, so there's no no one delivered to you us. You mean before Atlanta, there was Douglasville? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So I live in Douglasville, uh, <laughs> still currently, and uh, born and raised in Douglasville proper. But um, uh, where I lived, <clears throat> so our house was nice and fine and dandy, but um, and we had some acreage. I don't know how much, but our backyard was um this guy who invented the tranquilizer dart his name is red palmer Mm. and he had 600 acres so i live in like the lived in the woods um they weren't all ours but they were (laughs) i traveled around like he didn't know we were there so my point is we had nothing that could deliver to us so um we we at one phase of life i'm talking maybe three or four months uh, we had a, we ordered a pizza one time cause we had this party going on or something in my house and like, uh, <clears throat> we ordered this pizza and, and my dad literally was just like, yo, bring us this pizza. I'll make it worth your while. Right. And, uh, whoever answered the phone was like, cool, I'll do it. Uh, he just took a, took, you know, trusted us. I don't know what he tipped them, but I know that for like six, maybe seven months, anytime we needed to order a pizza, we could. Yeah. And for us, that was huge because we never ordered any food ever um, to deliver to us, you know. And so for these few months, I mean, we milked it. And, and, I, and you know, I, I, I would like to know how much my dad tipped this guy because it, it, now it became a thing where right. every time we'd get pizza, he'd have to tip this like healthy amount because we were middle of nowhere, you know. But um, yeah, so it was always just food that you had at the house or whatever you know mm-hmm. it was never like oh let's just order in chinese or anything do you uh was there any like hunting situation going on for you because you're out there no like my, no one around you guys you were not my, eating, like game or anything i mean we saw stuff it was but my my dad never really hunted i think mm-hmm. he did maybe when he's like younger but as far as like we never hunted we fished a lot um not not on property but you know if we went out we'd go fishing and um but yeah my, i have some uncles that hunted and i don't think my have dad you ever was, dabbled like, no, I've never shot an animal to eat it. Um, Do you have a interest? Not an interest, but like a, <clears throat> I guess an interest in trying it out. Um, I don't. I I would like to have the knowledge to know how it worked mm-hmm. for in case it was ever a scenario where it's like, oh, we're surviving. Doomsday. Now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one good Trump tweet, and here we are. Like, <laughs> are you are you, you know, a conspiracy so, guy? Um, I love conspiracies. I I I don't know. I mean, any of them. I, I, I they're, like they're they're all of them. all of them to me are like fascinating. <laughs> but I like a lot of them. Uh, but uh, yeah. I mean, I I I'd like to think I'm smart enough to know some of them are just fun to pretend you're into. Yeah, it's always weird. Like when I started giving up coke, mm. I was like, why? Yeah, why is there so much sugar in this? But then I had this weird thing about like, they just want to keep you fat. Oh yeah, like they, you know, <clears throat> they the who are the proverbial yeah, they yeah, yeah. are, but they just want to keep you fat so you rely on their healthcare and the insurance and blah. Well, so that's part of why I started <laughs> getting like I should get my shit together. I think, um, I mean, it's just sugar is addictive. I think that I mean, it's not. 
processed sugar. I, I think I think yeah, natural yeah, sugar yeah, is okay, yeah, yeah. but processed I, sugar is like the it's worst. It's not. Uh, and and here's a conspiracy theory, but I think it's true. But I don't know. I haven't really done my like. I haven't Googled it, so I don't know. But I haven't I've, gone past the first page on um, Google. Yeah, uh, I haven't researched it. I love that. <laughs> that one of my favorite things is people are like, well, I was researching on blah, blah, blah. It's like, what, you Googled it yeah. once? That's not like, you can't uh, define that as researched. Like, did you talk you, to any scientists or yeah. anything? Yeah, so I've been researching on uh, sugar the other day. Um, but anyway, I don't think it's... Um, I think it's a pretty known fact that Coca-Cola in its beginning just used cocaine. cocaine. So it's like, they know... They're good marketers, you yeah. know what I mean? Them you and the pivot cigarette that. folks, you know, you gotta... they know how to like, yeah. Um, God, that would have been insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, don't yeah. even want to know what that would be. Because I've, I've personally never even tried yeah, cocaine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it would have <clears> been <throat> wild to see that shit. But I mean, weren't they using heroin to like well, uh, uh, cure your cough and stuff back in the day? Yeah, I was about to say, like, to be fair, if, they, if, 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 I mean, nobody. I don't think we need to give them the benefit of the of the of the doubt here. But hopefully, they just didn't realize what they were doing. Well, I mean, cocaine was used, from what I gather in my research. Um, cocaine was used uh, as it when you go to the dentist before they came up with Novocaine. Oh wow! I think they're using cocaine to, and I might be way wrong. This might just be numb your gums, garbage material. But I'm pretty positive back in the day, before they knew the addictive qualities. That's the thing they use, and then they came up with Novocaine, or they realized this was insanely addictive, and well, then I mean, they came up with Novocaine. I've <clears throat> heard a lot about the numbing effects of cocaine on people's gums and or faces. Yeah, but right. here it is: two dudes that don't do it that are just like, <laughs> right. "Hey, these are the things I know." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, so maybe there's a world we live in where. Coca-Cola company just thought like, oh, here's this thing people seem to like. Let's put it in there. Put that in the drink. But they probably were just wow, really good marketing. Everyone's everyone's buying our coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's the the point zero one percent know what they're doing. You know, so I actually saw a video, and you may have seen the same video since you are a Coca-Cola <clears throat> connoisseur of sorts, uh, where the uh, this YouTuber like made uh, old school Coke from like the 1800s <clears throat> or late 1800s. Yeah, I was waiting for him to put the cocaine in there. Obviously, that was not going <laughs> yeah. in, but I was like, huh, I wonder how that would go. That's funny. I'd we, like to know how, because supposedly the the like secret recipe is still like lot like cause, so in Atlanta we have the Coca Cola Museum. Yeah, I've been there, uh, and and they have like uh, apparently the the thing is like locked away the recipe or whatever in the is, like, locked somewhere. away somewhere. Yeah, you guys have the CDC over there too. Sure, Center of Disease <clears throat> Control, probably. We have a lot of stuff. Walking <laughs> it's a pretty dead. big market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all kinds of stuff. Pretty big market. Um, we should probably talk about like sixty eight or something. Band huh? stuff. Lame. <laughs> we could talk a little bit because I know you guys have. You guys uh, <clears throat> just finished recording your album. We did, right? Just um, finished. Is there any kind of like <clears throat> date as far as like release date for single? Nothing yet. We so guest appearances. We just finished recording with Nick Nick Rasky Lennox. Um, he did uh, Foo like, Fighters, Foo Fighters, and Deftones, and um, many others. Um, and it was awesome. Um, and we literally just finished it, so now it's kind of in the labels world, you know, and what all they do and. Um, mastering and and all that stuff i i just say let like my whole go-to is like oh yeah now we let the adults handle it you know um (laughs) um but yeah it's it's fun and uh it's uh i mean what can you say about an album that hasn't been said before you know what i mean it's 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 our best album that we've done yet quiet stuff it's like whatever it's Mm -hmm. just i i mean we wrote some more songs and i think they're i love them and i i love I can't wait to be playing them live. Um, we're playing a uh, one or two maybe tonight, but um, they're some of my favorite songs I've ever written. But really? Again, surely any artist would say that about the newest. Why would you not write? Yeah, them? when I try to ask like a guest, like, <clears throat> "What's your favorite album you've ever done?" Minus the one you just put yeah. out or are putting out. But I mean, how weird would it be to be like, "Oh yeah, um, I've I really prefer the album before." <laughs> you know, what I mean, like what this one's okay. Thing. Yeah, like. It's not a good of selling course point. I'm going to write my favorite songs. Um, so, uh, but so I don't know anything about release date. I don't know anything about song title. I don't. I've, I've got to do all that. Still. So it's probably technically not even mastered. It's not mastered. Yeah. Okay. Not even technically. Just it is not mastered. You just finished tracking it for the. Most we just part. finished. We. I flew. I we finished. Uh, recording 
on day X and I got home. I think I was home for a week or maybe a week and a half. And then we left for tour. So it's like, it literally is still even being mixed and mm-hmm. stuff like the whole thing's happening. So. You recorded in Nashville, right? Nashville. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> does 68, I mean, cause like some bands, I don't want to say change their sound per se per album, but they do mature. <clears throat> uh, is that something that's going on with this new album? Like, is it somewhat sonically or musically different than the previous two? <clears throat> I think so, but I would like to think, um, at least for myself, every album I've ever done, I have no interest in recreating a previous record. So um, I don't set... When I'm first starting to write the songs, even whether it was the, whether I was writing in The Chariot or I was writing with this band, like... 68 or anything i i never go all right let's make it super different i just write what's coming to me then but obviously i'm a different person i've grown up at that point i've listened to different music whatever different things come to me but i think because whatever previous record it was whether it's now or back in the day whatever previous record is like that's been done so Mm -hmm. there's no i don't need to do that again you know and so i would like to think every album's always been able to kind of stand on its own two feet um and you know maybe people would um disagree with me i don't imagine anyone from lamb goat disagreeing with me but um i would imagine they would have approved they're pretty easy saying um but uh i i think every album i've ever done hopefully at least in my mind has been sort of a new journey and new adventure without alienating people who liked what they liked before like Mm -hmm. um Like, there's examples, if you knew the album, on this album, that I could say, like, we've never done this before. Like, there's a there's a whole couple of bits that are more, real sort of Otis Redding-influenced, kind of James Brown world. Like, you know, just real funky, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but still kind of rooted in rock and roll, which I find James Brown was. And, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I, I You could swing your hips and still just hear the greatness of riffs, whether it's like some sort of some trumpet type riff or a riff, you know, just <clears throat> all those, like all the the stuff that combines to make an energetic uh, performance mm-hmm. on the record, you know, or whatever is, is there. And so there's things like that on this new record that I really love and, and, and got me out of my comfort zone when I was writing the song, I was kind of, you know, really having to, you know, dive into a new area, you know, of my, that I'm not comfortable with and that's what I enjoy to do. Um, and then there's some songs that's just like, in my humble opinion, this riff is great and I'm going <laughs> to play it a bunch. You know what I mean? Ripper of a riff. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going um, so uh, yeah, as I'm writing a song, regardless of what band is for, it's just sort of, what do I want to listen to today? What do I want to listen to now? And um, that almost always is super different than what I was listening to and also it helps we we don't typically put out albums like once a year right, i know a lot a of bands years. just smash albums out i think every time i die puts out albums every year or two every, years they do it so fast it seems and here's the thing <clears throat> i'm looking at you every time i die y'all make great albums i don't know how they do it they still make great albums because there's a lot of bands that pop out albums garbage every couple of years in it in it and, and it's just like man you know i so with a band like Every Time I Die, who are you know some of my longest standing friends, I I am inspired and like it blows me away because I don't know that I have that in me. I, yeah. I I put out albums, you know. I think the last one, when this one finally comes out, uh, uh, Two Parts Viper, which is our last record, I think will be three years old. Yeah, maybe. 2017. I think it came out. Uh, something like that. Maybe nearing yeah, Deluxe come out 2018 or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, but those were already right. we already had those songs recorded. We didn't do anything for those. Um. So my point is, you know, every three years or so is when I start getting to the point where I go, yeah, yeah, here's songs that I feel good about releasing. But, um, I mean, every time I die, they they pop them out pretty fast, it seems. Yeah. But they, but they It's crazy it. when you think about it, like, because, uh, I mean, <clears throat> that band has been mentioned a lot, obviously, in yeah, this yeah. podcast. But I love them. They're one of the bands that, like, they just, they ran the gauntlet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they just, they... <clears throat> 98 99 and then still today you know what i mean they're still doing it and they didn't really ever they lost members you know what i mean they they even though they've lost members and done this that or the other 
it's technically almost kind of like they've kept i mean the core part of the band is um, yeah, obviously yeah. together but the sound and the environment and the uh, energy and stuff like that is just you know crazy they but. crush it and another thing too is they tour a ton which is something so i tour a ton so if you were to go well why don't you release albums more often i would probably just chalk it up to well i'm touring all the time but they also tour all the time and somehow they're still writing quality yeah. enough music to put out you apparently know which is crazy apparently they're sitting on a bunch of riffs right now they don't have anywhere to record <laughs> or to practice slash record it really? so that's what they're looking for yeah they made a post about that's that funny. recently so yeah yeah um do you guys is it do you find it easier to write with for the 68 than your previous <clears throat> bands because um, obviously it's just you two you and nico and i wouldn't say easier um because the writing process is still similar um in the chariot uh i would write uh, as much as I can and, and you know someone else might write a couple things someone else might write a couple things so um, so that might have been easier as far as if someone had something that was up to par or whatever it would be like cool and then I would only have to come up with six or seven songs or whatever whatever <laughs> the, the, it is you know we're at 68 it, you know I have to come up with the full gamut but uh, <clears throat> writing's um, how do I say this writing is is no matter what band, no matter what, or for me anyway, it's, it's beautifully difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, it is a, ta- it is, I, I find I get into my own head sometimes very in an, in an unhealthy way sometimes, but I love every minute of it. I love, I love because a lot of, I try to capture a lot of impulsive stuff. I don't, I don't try to overthink it. It's rock and roll. It's not supposed mm-hmm. to be like, you know, overthought, you know? And so I try to get, capture a lot of impulsive stuff, but if it's the first song I've written for, you know, like, cause I'm always writing, um, no matter what. So like if, if I've, if it's the first thing I've written for, for what will later become an album, I've had sometimes mo- definitely months, but sometimes years to listen to it. And so as impulsive as I try to keep it, sometimes you can't help but be like, Ooh, I could actually make that better. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I have time to do that, you know? And well, I know you've, <clears> you've <throat> said too, that you never finish a song. You only abandon it. Uh, yes. So, yes. Yeah. I can well, I I get that. Any artists can relate with that. You, you're never, you give me two more weeks on anything. I can make it better. <laughs> yeah. You give me two more years. I can make it better. But at some point you just have to let it go. Yeah, you know cut what I mean? it off. And, uh, and let, let, let it get into the abyss and let people, you know, take it for themselves, you know? And, um, which is another beautiful part I love, you know, even people that don't like it, even people that go, ah, oh, this is garbage. It's like, <clears throat> that's their, uh, that's their, their, uh, they, can, they have that uh, option, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? To not mm-hmm. like, and, um, I've never written music like for the masses or anything. So people not liking it is fine with me. Cause I, I've never been one, I've never thought about the stuff I've created as like, oh yeah, well will spoon feed you and you'll love it, you know, mm-hmm. cause it's getting played on the radio. It's getting done. It's like, yeah. you have to dig into bits. I don't know if this is even a term anymore, but like underground bands, you know, band, like I don't even know if that exists anymore. Cause what does that even mean? But the internet doesn't make, I mean, I think with the the <clears> internet, <throat> there's now there, there are underground bands, but the ability to not be underground is it's really, it's, everything's really so accessible yeah. that it's hard to count. Ca- but the point is I've always been in bands that were clearly not top forties and clearly not being spoon fed because of help of back in the day MTV or now mm-hmm. radio or whatever, you know, it's like, you, you just have to, it's work on the, the, the audience's part, you know, like, like we, me and Nico were uh, driving here actually. And we were talking about how, <clears throat> you know, back in the day you'd be like, Oh, you know, Hey, our album's coming out. And it's like, okay, let's pretend there's a person who loves your band. So they drive to Best Buy, don't find it. They drive to Hot Topic. Hot Topic only had two. They sold out, so they can't find. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're asking a lot of a person, you know. And so I I say all that to say that you know the on the contrary, you have top forties bands or just you know top forty is such a broad term right now, but like <clears throat> radio bands. Or they radio get played on the radio, and 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 they're they're just like spoon fed. Like you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. And and well, if you and hear something you twelve times a day too, exactly. it, it, it's way more. Or palatable. if it's in the background, you didn't even know at the store you're shopping at, or if it's at this, or I've seen a video, or it's in this conspiracy movie that stuff, I saw. man. Conspiracy 0. stuff. Zero one percent that yeah. keep you down. Um, so we've never been like that. We've never been. I've never been in a band where that's been the thing. So people who, um enjoy 68 or enjoy my previous bands they 
in a, in a way they're invested. They've mm-hmm. invested the time to look it up or the in the case of driving to buy it or nowadays even streaming it and stuff. I know that's easier, but still, <clears throat> you know, they have to actually like reach out and like grab mm-hmm. it and pull it in versus just someone throwing it at them constantly and at some point it sticks. You know right, what I mean? right, right. And um I have no idea why I started talking about that, but there's my end there. That's cool. <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> no, but, yeah. but uh I, I, you know, one of the things I, I did want to ask in this, I mean, I already apologize for bringing up X bands, but, um, yeah, like how did you even get in to, uh, like, you know, music that's not for the masses? I mean, I know I, on your, there was a podcast you did with Ray on the hundred words, uh, podcast like a while ago, you talked about like you liking stuff that your brother didn't you have an older brother and like mm-hmm. basically anything that he likes you were like i'm not doing that yeah yeah and so <laughs> i he you you mentioned on there that y- he threw away bleach or whatever the mm-hmm. bleach cassette and that you picked that up and <clears throat> you know you you kind of like dive dove into that was that like your intro into like aggressive <clears throat> or more aggressive music maybe like, uh it that definitely wasn't was the beginning of but i wouldn't uh, like, are you a big Nirvana fan still? Or, or I love Nirvana, um, but that happened. Um, but that was probably disconnected. I mean, it has to be connected, but that was probably a little more disconnected than what I would see my journey as because I was so young that I didn't even have. I I, I wasn't going. This is cool, and I know it's cool. Yeah, I, I just was listening to it for the sheer sake that. I knew he didn't. He went into it. You know what I mean? Like for whatever reason. Well, that's weird. <clears throat> that you weren't. I mean, because coming from Atlanta, uh, hip hop and rap is like huge. Yeah, there. yeah. So it's just weird that <clears throat> uh, not weird. I shouldn't say, but it's just it's it's fascinating that you weren't really you didn't gravitate <clears throat> toward that at all. It, or... it was a journey. It was a very very long journey, and it definitely. I mean, the when I started, uh, so okay, my very first concert, very first show that I went to i paid to they go just to. came to town the band you're about to tell me bush yeah toadies and hum that's well, just my bush. first yeah yeah. yeah yeah um so bush toadies and hum loved all three bands and i went to my parents had to drive me to the fox theater and drop me off so i watched it and and, and i mean i love those bands i love them love them but they were on the radio they were on yeah. you know there was nothing necessarily underground about them by any means they were technically <clears> kind of <throat> underground but that alternative scene was like all the rage well, and the 90s you know. was a weird time and and i was i i kind of love maybe it's just sort of the nostalgia of it but i loved because you could be weird i mean like you see some interviews with like beck back in the day and it's like this dude how do you was ever weird make as it? can be yeah. and it was amazing that that made it but my point is I did that show. I went to that show, and I was that was it. I I was that very very moment. I was like, "This is what I'm. I want to do, and I'm gonna try my best to do it." So then I started just going to any show I could. Any show it didn't matter if I had the money. I went. I, I saw Pumpkins uh, on on um, Melancholy Infinite Sadness. I saw Rage Against the Machine. I oh saw, my goodness, like, you are so <clears throat> lucky. I just saw everything I could see. Everything yeah. I saw stuff I didn't even care too much about, but. Um, I don't know the exact, um, gosh, if I wish I, anyway, <clears throat> these were all big bands. These were all big, uh, stadium rock type stuff. Right. And then I went and saw, um, I wish I knew exactly who it was, but I went and saw a show at the Masquerade, um, which is Atlanta and it's an Atlanta staple and, and it was slightly smaller, still, I think 1200 cap room, 15 maybe. Um, and that was the first, I mean, there's no barricade. Mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. Like there's the, the singer, you know what I mean? And that was the first time I was like, Oh, there's some, like, there's a different vibe. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm going to skip ahead a bunch, but basically that show made me go to cheaper shows, which, which, which I could afford more. So local I was like, cool. shows. Well, not yet local, but, um, but I remember I saw, I saw like, um, unsane and I saw uh stuck mojo. I mm-hmm. saw, um, uh, we're dipping back to the 90s for so real. many so many bands and and w- this one time and I, it might have been stuck mojo or maybe it was unsane or orange nine millimeter so i don't remember but whatever show it was a band opened and they were awesome and um at least i thought they were at that time but i don't know if they were now uh it might have been dated for all of them but uh they 
were like, yeah, we're from right here, Atlanta. And back in those days, you know, especially in your local band, you just played like nearly every weekend. Yeah. So they're like, we're actually playing, you know, two weeks ends from now. And so you should come check it out. And I, and it all clicked. I was like, whoa, they're from here. Yeah. Like they're, they live in my home, like Atlanta. And so, I, so we went and saw them the next, the two weeks and, and, and the singer exited stage and went and sold merch yeah you were saying that po- <clears throat> on that podcast okay. you were saying this is actually i can't remember okay. what the band name was and yeah I, i'm apologizing for that to help you out with that but yeah it was definitely so that was the moment somewhere in all that it clicked local bands there, there's bands that are here they're just playing shows here and and they might jump on a cool stuck mojo show or whatever but right. they, they're from here and um yeah, somewhere in all that is is you know I I think I even maybe technically started uh, like Norma Jean at the time, but I but whatever it was was that was those things made me realize because if you're if you're a kid trying to you know like oh, I want to be in a band and you're thinking like Smash Pumpkins like. <laughs> well, I don't know how to take that step. Right. I mean, I still don't know how to take that yeah, step. Yeah. If you no... were to tell me like write a Smashing Pumpkins esque song, I'd be like, uh, no, yeah, I, there's or, no way. Or more importantly, hey, go do a Smashing Pumpkin sized tour. Oh, it's like yeah. I don't, I don't even know. I I've I'll been in the, the music industry right now, yeah. now for so long, and I don't know <laughs> how to do that. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I've you're playing festivals, known... kind of. It's almost the same thing, but they're not there for just you. Well, per se. yeah, and they hit me up, which is very very nice of them, but. I don't know how to go and get on yeah, a yeah. big stadium tour like that. I've done, I've been fortunate enough to do some neat stuff, but outside of them hitting you up. So when you're a kid and you're thinking about being a band, there's, there's no step where you go, Oh, I'm going to be pumpkins, but there is a step where you go, Oh, I can play in My the town. city of Atlanta, yeah. you know? And so that became the like hook that I was like, I just want to jam, you know? And so at those, at those, my iPad, the, the bottom. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt you. Just passing my iPad. Thank you. Back in those days, we would just have our own parties so that we could play shows. Right. <laughs> and, and that's how we would play. <laughs> and so that was like, <clears throat> that's how we started. That, that's how I started Norma Jean when I was in like sophomore in high school or whatever it was. So, um, yeah, you were saying you don't, <clears throat> you know, because lyrically, I've always, um, I've been a fan of most, I mean, I've been a fan of all your bands that you've been a part of <laughs> at the time that you were a part of them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I kind of had this like disconnect with Norma Jean after you left, as most, as a lot of people I say uh, maybe did as well, but then I kind of gravitated <clears throat> back toward yeah p- toward them. I think some of their best records was written after me for the record, but I carry think on. the what uh, Polar similar was <clears throat> like maybe their best record. That one of my had. favorite records, which is it's always a, a little odd to say your favorite record <laughs> is something that's not newest, right? Um, but I mean, no disrespect to the band. Uh, Corey, you know I love you, but um, uh, um, uh, uh, Redeemer is actually my favorite album, okay. and it was like two, maybe three albums after I left. So yeah, I, I, I think that was an adult record versus. I'd like Oh God, the Aftermath too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, so that's my favorite album they did, but I've liked everything they've done, and Oh God was great. Um, but that that's my favorite is is Redeemer. If I had to pick one. All right. Well, the internet's not going to work on my iPad, so I'm not going to bring that up. We're just going to wing the rest of it, which is fine. <laughs> I just won't get to Alex's questions as often as I probably should. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> so how did you, speaking of like Norma Jean, the Chariot, and all your other bands, uh, how did you kind of like gravitate toward the like the dissonant, like weird sound <clears throat> that you guys, like Norma Jean was like one of the big pioneers for? <clears throat> um, again, I like think the crazy. Just we used to call them shit notes. We call them, uh, we've called them horror chords. We've called them squirrely birds, um, uh, nanner nanners, yeah. and uh, there may be a couple others. I'm I mean, not I fell in right love now. with that. When, when, I, when I started hearing that, I was like, Same. what is this? And the- we also fell in love. Um, <clears throat> there was a bunch of, I mean, we were listening to everything from. Were you playing guitar on this time too? So when I started Norma Jean, I technically played guitar and um and then played for a while but nobody would have ever known i mean this was when we were just doing our own parties and stuff but when we got um yeah like even like the earliest inception of even that um but when when i got uh the second guitarist i was like i just want to be a singer (laughs) um 
And so, uh, but <clears throat> I think the actual Nanner Nanner chord, we, I think we heard Corn do. Mm, interesting. Like, because they do that, you know, they do versions of that. They do the sort of like, here's the right note, but you go one over kind mm-hmm. of thing. This is like, this is like <clears throat> life is peachy kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Not like issues, right? We're not talking like yeah, issues. Yeah. Uh, this was probably uh, the Corn record, the first yeah, one. Self-titled yeah, self-titled life is peachy um, stuff. Yeah. I know they do, but I mean, you know, we were into that and, and some of our earlier stuff maybe resembled that more, but even prior to that, we were doing like Iggy pop songs and, and probably sounded more like, uh, you know, or at least trying our best to sound like unsane and stuff, you know, just very dirty. And, and, um, but then, yeah, um, as we sort of got into different things and stuff, we got more kind of like love deftones love corn and but i think um i don't know i mean i, I don't want to say we just directly took it from them but i i know corn did those like unsavory notes you right. know those, those things it's like that's not right but it sounds <laughs> great you know <clears throat> and so we just kind of did it and we just loved it we loved the the feeling it would give you you know and and then doing things that were incorrect and and it wasn't mathematically incorrect to us it was just pure ignorance we mm-hmm. we didn't know i mean we did i still don't know scales or anything like that so i don't know like if i'm hitting a wrong note i just know that sounds neat i like right. that you know even with 68 um so you do you <clears throat> with, are you <throat> like when you learn guitar did you just kind of like mess around with it yeah you I'll didn't like take taught. classes or anything yeah yeah because yeah. tim um, was also like that for and i was yeah. like that is insane because the structure <clears throat> and the and just the guitar work in both your bands is like or well i mean like you you obviously weren't writing a lot of guitar riffs maybe for the bulk part in like the chariot and norma Jean, but like it's <clears throat> weird to meet people that didn't like you know they didn't, weren't trained or anything like that yeah well um i wrote a good bit and i wrote uh ton of the chariot stuff um okay. yeah uh between all the records and stuff i definitely wrote a, a ton of that um and then norma jean uh i wrote x amount of songs but uh, uh the albums i was on but um <clears throat> i think i'm a big fan of knowledge i really love to know things but i think when it comes to guitar i think we were able to create the sound that we did because of our ignorance. Mm-hmm. Um, I am not even about to lie to you when I tell you that we were doing some like extensive touring, like quality stuff, not full U S touring yet, but not just weekend warrior stuff. I'm talking, we do two weeks in the Southeast. We do some like bigger band stuff. And we didn't know that you tune your guitars to a certain note right we would tune them to each other but we like someone at one point on a tour not in our hometown <laughs> was like what are y'all tuned to what and we were like i don't know him yeah <laughs> literally like a hundred percent like i don't know and they were like what do you mean you don't know and we were like what i don't even know what you mean what are you tuned to yeah and so i don't know are what you talking about like standard time. tuning <clears throat> drop d or anything like that or are you just like we i'm talking about i'm talking about so let's pretend standard tuning we would tune to each other and we would we knew how to play the power chords mm-hmm. and so our guitar would be in tune in theory and it would be in tune to that dude and it'd be tuned to the bass but it was because we were like oh hit your open okay mm-hmm. but we didn't have we didn't own tuners we oh didn't, okay we didn't so i wasn't mm-hmm. tuning or i didn't i wouldn't play guitar at that moment but like we weren't tuning to a tuner that said oh you're in drop C right, or right, whatever. Right, right, right. It, we were on a tour when someone was like, what are you tuned to? And we were like, I don't know. And then they hooked to their tuner and whatever it was at the time. So I remember being in a van driving to like another show going, I guess we should figure out what we're tuned to, like what we want to tune to, <laughs> yeah. like having this discussion. And we were talking about bands, you know, like, like coalesce and, uh-huh. and, and bands. We were like, well, what are they tuned to? And you know, like, so, <clears throat> you know, I mean, our ignorance sort of, maybe assisted in us playing these dissonant chords mm-hmm. and these notes that weren't correct. And like we would play a riff that's like, Oh, that that's that riff sounds neat, you know? And it's, but someone who really knew what they were doing on guitar might be like, well, that's not right. You know, that those, 
you don't do that in the scale of whatever, you know, <laughs> but we didn't know that. So right. we weren't, we weren't, so we just were having fun, you know, and, and a lot it of good a comes lot from that too. I, I, um, I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of wisdom in not going through that. You, you could probably get to point A to point B faster, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, we were. I mean, we have. I've had a blast, and and I my some of my favorite times was in those days, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and because nothing we were doing was a business, it was just for fun or oh, to, for the passion fun. of like the music, nothing yeah. involved equaled money. Nothing equaled. Yo, if we do, when we do, it was just like it could wrap up at any moment. We, you know, right. any more like, first of all, we're having a blast because we got to go back to high school uh, ne- <laughs> next yeah, Monday. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like literally some of those, I mean, we, we were, if we got to do like a week thing or something, um, you know, we'd skip, we have to skip some school and like, and well, luckily for you, it wasn't like stuff. you had to, I think now if you miss <clears throat> X amount of days, you got to like, you're automatically. Yeah. I out. hear it's crazy. Um, we, uh, it was a different, Time, yeah, different time together though 90s <laughs> it was uh you know it was very like it was a very unique time and we, none of us knew it was a unique time well yeah we didn't know where we were going but that particular time frame that we're talking about you know golden age of like <clears throat> yeah. the our particular music scene yeah you know what i mean that that was really that's why like nostalgia is such a a bad thing i think for for me for the <clears throat> scene because like we were talking about earlier sure. i don't know if it's on the podcast or not but uh, not that not that many like new band. You, there's a lot. Well, first off, I think there's way too many new bands to keep up with. Sure, but um, there's just like uh, too much going on and stuff. Well, it's and, too much, and also there's something to be said about. And, th- and this is not a blanket statement. There's, I'm sure, there's so many good new bands that exist. But um, I've produced a few bands here and there, and so I've dealt. I've talked to a bunch of younger bands mm-hmm. and. Some have this, some don't. <clears throat> when when early Norma Jean was doing our thing, when Every Time I Die was doing their thing, when when you know all all these bands that were popping up at that point, um, you know, there's other bands that I know personally that I could vouch for that w- there was no such thing of oh man, when we make it, it's gonna be a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, the sure. biggest <laughs> thing that people would compare us to is still a small band that was doing. 300 cap rooms right. that like like I, I don't want to mention the band's name in case this is embarrassing but one of the bigger bands that we would sort of be like dude you guys are the next like the dude still worked at a pizza shop because yeah. he had to pay bills so so the penultimate goal if you had one was still I got to work at a pizza shop and pay bills yeah. so th- I say all that to say this we did it purely out of a love for jamming yeah. and music and live show and people and humans mixing with other humans and, and just mosh pits and like all this like sweat, you know, it was it because it was no such thing. Now my, the, the thing that I said earlier goes to this, a lot of new bands, not all of them, but a ton of them, the very, very, very earliest inclination is business, right? It's, Oh man, dude! When we get on a bus, like that, be and it's like a bus. Like it, back in the day, if I was touring, if I was joking about touring on a bus, it would be the equivalent of me now being joking about touring on a private jet. Right? Yeah. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like, like there's no such thing. Yeah, and that's not my first priority. Yeah. Like, like that's like making it. You know, paying your bills I with it. That's not even that wasn't even on the docket back. A lot then. of bands now. I mean, I would I shouldn't <laughs> say a lot of bands, but I think that bands now also, um, you know, they set out because. Now that road has already been paved. Yeah. Like you guys, every time I die, all these other sure. bands have already paid the road, paved the road for like these bands actually can amount to yeah, something yeah, yeah. next to nothing. So <clears throat> I think a lot of bands that start out like, um, knocked loose obviously is a really big band currently yeah. right now. Um, and a lot of people may like not have heard of them until like this last <clears throat> record or the, mm-hmm. the record that just came out. But, you know, they've also been doing it for a for number sure. of years already. So yeah. a lot of people kind of, you know, forget that once you hear of a new band, that band's been doing their thing for a Most hot second. You yeah. Know what I mean? So because I remember when we got a we did a tour, Norma Jean did a tour. It was a Converge and Hatebreed. And at that moment, uh, that very, very slice of moment, <clears throat> Hatebreed was like they 
was they were breaking perseverance boundaries. or something like that um or before yeah, then? I, it, it, they were i mean they were still doing like uh like thousand cap rooms like 800 to that's still big cap. as heck back then though. oh it was it was the biggest yeah there was nothing bigger as far as i was i mean we were like <laughs> what like and i might have been i might exaggerate it might have been like six to eight hundred i don't remember exactly this feels like a thousand it was so many people and we were just like here's a heavy band who's broken through you know what yeah. i mean and you know, this day and age, there's bands that, and, and even Avery went on to do way hey, better than that. Shit, yeah. yeah, but but like at that time, I remember just being like, "This is we're about to be on this tour. This is the biggest thing ever," you know. And so again, when uh, I say all that, I, I want to just sort of hark one more time back on the fact that some bands, some newer bands, I think when you're when you're like, let's start a band, and that that first priority is some sort of fame or yeah. some sort of uh notoriety or some sort of uh i can I, this is you know, like i can make it whatever that means selling out like so to speak. when that's your first initial thing i think who am i and who cares but i think that can definitely hinder the whole process of like hey for sure how about being five buds that yeah, love but, hanging out yeah. and because if you get stuck sweating in a van together you got to be able to like chill and, mm-hmm. and and kick it and like not hate each other but if your only thought process is like touring a bus it's probably not going to happen yeah no and matter how much you put that out in the universe and therefore when it doesn't happen you feel like you have failed when i've uh, i have technically toured a bus a couple of times but uh, because of weird circumstances but it's like if I, if that was my only goal or my only barometer for success, I would have <laughs> this whole thing would have been failing. <laughs> right. Every band would have right, failed right. Uh, as far as Wild Style was in it, you know. But um, but for me, it became a success the moment I was having fun playing a show. Yeah. Whether it's local town USA uh, Atlanta for forty kids, it's like yeah. I'm playing a show. Well, my band never made money one <clears throat> bit, and we would tour. Me neither. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, my band never, never <clears throat> did anything. I mean, not as far as like financially. Yeah, yeah. Went, but like, again, best times, dude. Best times of my life it were is spent. The best. And you know, the thing is, like, uh, for <clears throat> bands, this could probably be helpful for bands that are like hitting the road and just like slumming it, and just mm-hmm. like it's hard out there. Um, though, looking back, those rough times are much better than even the good times on tour. <laughs> Cause it's just like, Oh wow. I can't believe we slept in the parking lot in New Jersey yeah. in the middle of summer. You know what For I mean? Sure. With the doors open and we're just like, well, yeah. sweating our balls off. So that kind of stuff always sticks with <clears throat> you. And those are the stories you tell later. Yeah. You don't tell the story of like going into a hotel and sleeping good for eight hours and then waking up the next day and leaving. And partly that's you not even part mean? of the whole, yeah, that's not even part of the whole <clears throat> gimmick, so to speak of being in that kind of band. That's it's, just like a, it's all about the adventure. Yeah. It's the adventure. And like, that's the thing that I think people want to just skip that first step and go straight to touring on a bus or whatever. And it's like, Honestly, if you can do that, cool, go for it. Why not, I guess. But for me, I've never been interested in that part of rock and roll or whatever. I've been interested in playing loud music in front, yeah. of, in front of humans. Even So 68's been fortunate enough. We've done some stadium rock tours and stuff, and, and, and they're nice. I'm not going to complain about you know 3,000 people being at a show every night, but... There's a 13 foot barricade. I mean, it's just heads, you know. It's, it's a different hard thing. Yeah. To be, I, I I don't want to sound ungrateful because I love the uh, opportunity, but I'm here to look out and see humans. You know, I want to see a full body. I want to see. I want to look out and and that, that's the interact. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I enjoy playing loud music and the camaraderie of other people. When it's that big of a thing. I mean, it's just me and Nico jamming and right. for each other. Like we're at practice, my right. you know, because yeah. because there's 13 foot away is the nearest soul, and yeah. that and I can't interact with them, and and they then it it starts to become like if that's where I lived, I don't live there, so I don't have to like really cross this bridge. But if I lived there, if our if a band I was in ever made it to a level, like I would then force away to interact really hard. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like because I don't have to do it, but I would make it my own thing and mm-hmm. feel like, okay, there's a lot of people, but somehow I can make them individual humans. But for now, <clears throat> because I live where I live, and from time to time I dip my toe into some big stadium right, rock right. tour that we get fortunate enough to do, um, 
it, it honestly just becomes, you know, you're just looking out at a sea of people and you're just kind of like, we're just going to jam for each other. It's yeah. like, it's me and Nico show. Here we know? go it's again. Like, yeah. Like, like <laughs> shaking his hand going, <laughs> this is neat. But, uh, you know, like I like, I like interacting with people and, and that's, you know, um, that's the stuff that I think, um, for me anyway, that's the heart and soul of it. Cause yeah. everything else is just kind of like, I don't know. Like m- money's neat. Uh, we need it. Um, <clears throat> but once it gets to that level, it's just, I mean, I-, I would imagine it very, very difficult not to phone it in a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're yeah, not, yeah. you're not seeing. Have faces you seen Motley Crue lately? Uh, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Google or uh, YouTube some of their later la- latest live shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That phoning it in is is. I w- how would you not? I, I don't know how you would. I mean, if but, that's you know, your they, thing every single day. I think they're used to it, though. You know, and that might mm-hmm. be, you know, that's what I was going to say, too, because, like, you you seem to love to challenge yourself. That's why yeah. I, I kind of feel like, <clears throat> not to bring up past bands again, but as I feel that. As the band gets big, I quit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like. <laughs> I've just, been called out before on yeah, that. Yeah. It's fun. But, you know, it's one of those things where, like, even I can't even think to myself, if I were, <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of starting a band now, but like, I don't ever foresee myself doing even like a festival or something like right. that. Because like, that's not something, all the music that I really, truly am passionate about, out, I, I mean, inside <clears> this <throat> kind of genre, it it speaks, it speaks to you way better in a yeah. more intimate venue for sure, rather than like a stadium thing. And like, you know, talking to like Tim about going on tour with like Isles and Chains and stuff like yeah. that, like and Corn. That's just like a crazy <clears throat> experience because like, you know, they're also one of those bands on the cusp of like, if you know, they could almost kind of, they've broken through a little bit, but they, you know, took time off and yeah. they can kind of break through again. But it's just like you're saying that there's a giant disconnect <clears throat> between a, a band like that and um you know it's just because like you said those most of those fans of that of those of these particular bands had to seek them out especially yeah. in our time right because no one was telling us about like for sure hey you should listen to this that's why it's usually a smarter audience that listens yeah. to 68 or every time it's usually predominantly a a more intelligent audience you know because no one was just throwing it at them right. constantly and then it just stuck and they're like, I like this. It's like, you know, they had to, like you said, they literally had to reach out, you know, grab a hold of it, bring it in. And then some, I'm sure some bands, they went, Oh, I'm not into this, but you know, it's, it's an investment to mm-hmm. some degree. And so I think it produces a, a, a far more intelligent, not, not to say, you know, some Taylor Swift crowds, not intelligent. I'm sure they are. Um, the music, but, however, though, <laughs> it just might not be as intelligent. Well, I, I, I'm not even saying that necessarily. I'm just saying, on on an average sort of broad stroke, it's very Taylor Swift crowds or Taylor Swift crowds. There's so many people. There's bound to be intelligent folks. But when you look at a lot our of parents world, are there too. When you look at our world, it, they, I mean, you you almost are setting a standard just by how hard it was to get back in the day. Nowadays with streaming, it's a little easier, yeah. but you still have to like. You know, you still have to dig in and go. Oh, they came out the new CD. I've got to jam it and My listen space, to it. I think, was a big thing <clears throat> for. Yeah, I mean, I bring it up all the time, but only because like that was insane to find bands on, and there's nothing really even like that now, <clears throat> other right. than like streaming platform. Yeah, and maybe like you know blogs and webzines and stuff like that. But before <clears throat> all that, you know, there was MySpace and yeah, you know, you I mean, that find started it, as far as I'm aware. Like, uh, you know, because I I was just barely the 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 bear because of uh jamie from hate breed he did um uh headbangers ball mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so so there was just the tiniest touch of of me living in some sort of world where you had to have mtv like you you like mtv yeah, she's back um you had to you if if mtv wasn't into you where else are they gonna see your stuff yeah. if you're not on the radio or whatever um, so I just barely touched it a bit, a bit. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but, um, but now we live in a world where like, if I go, yo, you check, you should check this band out right now. You can check them right, out. I, show them, I don't know. need MTV. I don't need the radio necessarily. I don't need, I just need some people who are kind of stoked who are willing to be like, yo, I'll check it out. I saw this cool show. You should go see this band. And then that person right then and there goes, 
okay, I'll check it out right now. But And then you either like it or you don't, but at least you know about it versus back in the day where I mean, you had to actually like submit to out, them. Yeah. You had to like, oh, I remember I did this interview one time and it was like I, for n- no name I had ever heard of. <clears throat> um She's like, I'm trying to hang yeah, out with Josh. Like, I'm just wanted, he's just wanting to be in your lap, but you're going to have hair all over you. So. Um, uh, but I did this one interview ages ago when 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 that was happening, and it was for something I'd never even heard of. But all my team of folks was going, "Yo, they're con- they're like in they're in cahoots with MTV. You should do this." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "So like <laughs> like it was like some like two a two two uh two in the afternoon uh, interview of uh, some big festival thing and. I was like, I don't want to go all the way out there and try to do this interview thing, yeah. you know? And like, and they're like, oh, they're, they're in cahoots with MTV. You should do it and all this stuff. And I was just like, <clears throat> well, you know, and again, it was that whole mentality of like, you got to get. Do you need that? <laughs> you got to get MTV on your side, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, and, he, and so, um, I don't remember my point other than saying nowadays, I think it's a lot easier when MySpace happened, when Facebook happened, all these things, these are things that I know bigger bands, I, it's, it's easy to make the argument, oh, no one's making money anymore because of all these things. It's true. There's, you, you can't not, you can't pretend that's not happening. But for bands I've been in, it's only made it more accessible. If someone's like, hey, there's this crazy band you should check out, boom, you can go to YouTube right now yeah. and you can check it out. And you definitely levels the playing field of a, it, a kind of. It helped bands I was in. I mean, again, bigger bands, you know, they probably saw their money just drop a ton. Oh, yeah. But I never saw my money go up, so I yeah. never had to worry about it going down. So for me, it was but just. But should like, their money have been up there <laughs> in the beginning to begin with? Because, like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, it, that most of that stuff was force fed upon yeah right people in general so of course they're like i I, like i have an argument about the beatles i'm not like the biggest beatles fan easy i know i love but they're also like they happen to be the that a band that was lucky at that time there was only Mm -hmm. like three stations everywhere so when something like when something's on the television most america was already glued to it anyway so like if the Beatles or something like the Beatles were to come out today, I mean, like boy bands come out all the time. You know? I'm not saying that the Beatles were technically a boy band, but right. it's one of those things where like, I feel like I, yeah, I get looked down upon a lot because I'm like, the Beatles are just the Beatles to me. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean, like uh, they they wrote their songs and all that, this, that, the other, but they also had the ability to be like the one band. Right. Yeah. 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 I feel that uh, I still love the Beatles, but um, I think, <laughs> I think every band in the history of ever is just kind of trying to do sort of what the Beatles are doing yeah. or, or Zeppelin or one, you know, but, um, <clears throat> but I mean, it is true, but there has to be something to be said about, well, what did the Beatles do that made the Beatles, the Beatles right. versus no, an X band that also existed or uh, mm-hmm. there had, presumably there was more bands prior to them that never actually did that thing. I always wondered about that too because I always wondered like there had to have been neighborhood bands with the Beatles like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean they sure. they all had to jam out and play shows at some mm-hmm. point and so like who were these other bands I mean you, let's let's talk about Elvis and let's talk about Johnny Cash and all them They, I mean before the Beatles you know mm-hmm. they, they were I love um, uh, Walk the Line that movie um, but I, I read Johnny Cash's book uh, before the movie came out and it talked about them touring but they're driving themselves yeah. from point A to point B. There, there's uh, in that in the, the scene in the movie is so good. It's like June Carter, Johnny Johnny Cash, Elvis, I think Roy Orbison, and maybe someone else. And they're all in this like station wagon <laughs> driving themselves. And like uh-huh. someone's got their feet like right there, and they're like ah. And it's like here's these like for us these gigantic Monstrous, yeah. like they they started it all. They invented touring, mm-hmm. like literally invented it, and. But, you know, like we were talking about younger bands now being like, oh, man, touring the bus. Yeah. Here's these people who are huge yeah. and they're just driving themselves because that's all you knew to do, you know, or whatever. And it's, and, it's humanizing. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I think the moment something does break or something does happen good for you or whatever, may, maybe you're far more grateful for it and you're so much more yeah. able to go, 
this is amazing because remember when we were driving ourselves around, you know, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, but, uh, splitting gas. Yeah, exactly. Um, Especially but gas was like what, five cents a gallon or something. So there's those bands who sort of forced it into existence. Maybe, maybe they didn't, maybe the right people. No, knew, I mean, I think you're right. They because forced it. In exi- and then in that Beatles time were able frame. to kind of jump on that bandwagon that they, you know, they had paved the road for the Beatles mm-hmm. and then the Beatles paved the road for everyone else, uh, for the stones. And then everyone else was able to yeah. jump in on all that, you know? And like, and so, you know, it, in a lot of ways, it's just been getting easier and easier and easier, you know? I mean, now all I need to tour is this. Yeah. I mean, this is the only thing I need to tour with. This is my tour manager. This is my maps. This is my music, everything. When I started touring, you know, you had proper maps. Did like you remember? Uh, physical I, I, map. <laughs> that's something that I can't... Um, it's a great I can't even, I can't even, like, remember. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, busting out, pulling <laughs> over at a rest stop and busting the Atlas out and being like, all right, where are we going? Like, yeah. How do we get Thumbing there? Coming through it and being like, okay, well... We're in this state. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where's the VFW hall? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, there's, I don't, I, I remember when MapQuest came out and you could like print off <clears throat> yeah, your directions. Yeah. Oh was my God. Huge. But, th- but the thing is back then. But you always made it where you needed to go. Yes. Eventually. I remember we would drive, like we had shifts, obviously driving. And I remember when it was your shift and you're driving around and all of a sudden you go, oh no, I am going the wrong way. And I know I'm going the wrong way because I hit the wrong state. Yeah. A state I should not have ever hit. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what does this even mean? Like, Hope the everyone's four asleep. Five hours. Oh, dude, you're, you're <laughs> praying they're asleep, and you pray you can do this little turn without everyone waking up and just being like, "What? Where we you at? drove into the Nebraska or whatever?" Yeah. You're like, oh, "That's mean, crazy." Dude. Um, so, but this is a great equalizer because back in the day, maybe you played great music, maybe you were a phenomenal songwriter, but you didn't have anyone able to like navigate maps and stuff yeah. or you or you got lost three too many times you're like this ain't worth it and you went home and you got a real job you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so sure. so Just... so nowadays you got everybody can tour every single person can pull up a map and i mean you're never lost right like and and so it, it's a great equalizer and, and in a way it can be a bummer but in a way it's kind of cool because it's like well now we've put all the focus on is the music good or is the music not good? Cause that's more of the barometer now. Yeah. Like I said, person a who couldn't navigate, maybe they wrote phenomenal music, but they just never was able to drive safely with someone else looking at the maps because they, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's, oh, yeah, for sure. and so their band was done. We never heard of it, you know, or whatever. Do you, uh, <clears throat> does it ever bum you out that there's like good music out there? You'll never hear all the time. Yeah. I, I think about it way too much. Yeah. And, that's, then, that's I, and then I think about too. the garbage, some of the garbage that is big and I'm like, Oh no, yeah, that's out here. Because this... some of the bands I know, some, some, some <clears throat> music, um, uh, some music I think, Oh, this is phenomenal. Uh, um, and then, you know, two years later they're done and I'm like, Oh, what would you, and they're just like, Dude, I, I gotta. What do you mean? Bills. There's bands like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. a bummer. So, um, are we done? Nah, I, I there's a couple things I want to ask really quick. <laughs> okay. Um, again, we're gonna touch base with some older shit. So, apologies. All good. Do you ever find it <clears throat> like? Because, bless the martyrs, obviously, like one of metalcore's like founding <laughs> records, obviously. So, like, do you ever find it's like hard to live up to that? When, before the 68, I should say, because I feel like 68 is a kind of a different uh, offshoot from even mm-hmm. the Chariot or whatever. But like, right. did when you were starting the Chariot and stuff like that, were you worried about like coming out <clears throat> from underneath that shadow of some some sort? Not really. Um, or were you not a part of the band that long to <clears throat> where you never really kind of grasped how big that record was at the time? Um, I was. Uh, I I I mean, I'm I'm still just me so it's hard for me to pretend that world exists Mm -hmm. because i'm just me and like daniel's daniel and scotty you know like all they're just my friends from middle school yeah yeah, so it's hard for it's hard for me to like take any of that seriously but um but i understand um you know uh i i see that it has sort of paved a road of some sort in some world and i'm very grateful that very honored to do that uh to have been a part of that um but when I started the chariot, I never it never even crossed my bo- my mind to live up to any standard. In fact, our first album was like recorded live and yeah. feedback everywhere. I mean, I did everything I could to sort of alienate any anything that would have any interest in like any sort of. It was supposed to be as like this is it's it's new thing. Yeah. It's its own thing, and and it's not in any way to be compared to that. But the thing is, 
when I parted ways, like Norma Jean kept going and they, and, and they they remained some of my longest standing friends and even, uh, at least a couple different variations of Norma Jean that have existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, mainly Corey. I mean, I'm good friends with him and still, and, but, um, but even a couple of people that have came in, you know, I know them and stuff really well. And so, um, Brad. yeah. So, um, so anyone that was, that existed, I'm always very, I, I, I was always very proud of, you know, like when I watched Norma Jean, like I was always like, these are my friends. These mm-hmm. are, these are in this music that I believe in <clears throat> when they did, Oh God, it was like, this is great music. And when it did good, I was like, great. And Redeemer, you know, all these things, I, I'm very, very happy for them. Uh, again, kind of like we were talking about how, how good, good music getting big makes you happy. You right, know? Right, it right. makes, uh, especially good people. Um, so I was always, always very, very big fan of, of, Norma Jean and then when and then them having success when I started the chariot it was um in my mind anyway it was such a different offshoot because you know they sort of went on to in, in the tiniest ways they sort of went on to do some more um they were sonically different a little bit a lot of yeah. I think a lot of bit um they sort of did some stuff that you could assume might make it onto a radio or something not that they were like Radio rock, but they were but also they were doing, doing the Ozfest thing a lot too. Like that was right. a, that was a big prominent. They thing were just doing a different ground. thing, yeah. and it was awesome, and I was happy for them. But what we were doing with the chariot was very very different. And so I never once thought about it as. And also, I know lightning never strikes twice, so I never even. <laughs> I literally thought the chariot, I, the chariot doing what we did, was a big shock for me because I'm I'm fully aware lightning shouldn't strike twice, and so the fact that Norma Jean did what we did. Uh, or you know, bless the martyr did what it did when while while I was with it. I and then I, and then what it continued to do. I never once pretended that the chariot would do any of that. I, I just was gonna stay. Lo- I mean, I was just playing music. I didn't right, really right, think right. about it, but I I knew it would never do that again. Mm-hmm. Um, but the chariot got to a spot where we were paying our bills and we were doing um really neat tours and yeah. and fun things that um that uh really surprised me and 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 it, and it made it to a point where i mean we traveled to russia four or five times that's crazy we did, um yeah. australia several times like all those things are things that are very humbling for me and then so, so to, for it to get to a spot where it literally got as big as it was and then we decided to part ways because <laughs> <laughs> again you Classic. just like to make it hard uh, for yourself you know i love the struggle I've, i find beauty in it but i'm too um, big i gotta go I, it, it, uh, when we parted ways, you know, and I started 68, um, I again was like, cool, well, lighting will surely not be in my favor <laughs> here. Um, and so far so good. It's yeah. been very, very nice. We've done, I've done some of the bigger tours I've ever done in 68 as far as supporting mm-hmm. other you bands. Were, uh, Stone Sour was one of them. <laughs> We've done Stone Sour. Um, we did Bring Me the Horizon in the States. That's and the in, question and Alex the, had. Um, what? Which Did fans we... were more receptive to 68? Was it the Stone <clears throat> Sour crowd or Bring Me the Horizon? It's hard to know. Because um, I feel like Bring Me the Horizon at least is somewhat in the same ballpark as like hardcore <clears throat> and metal because well, like they're different now. There's a, there's a connection with us and Bring Me. I, I've toured, The Chariot tour with Bring Me a few t- different times. So if you know Bring Me, you might have known The Chariot and you mm-hmm. might maybe know 68. Um, also... <laughs> I sang on one of their songs um, Mm -hmm. on one of the records. And so, again, a small connection. Um, Having said that, I think think it's trivial. If I had to just throw money down on something, I would say maybe Stone Sour was a little more um, receptive to us, but that doesn't mean the, the Bring Me crowd was... Not bad. feeling it. Yeah, yeah, they definitely were feeling it, and, and I've definitely seen a benefit of touring with them. We did an Australia run with them, uh, and it was just as big as I mean, it was proper arenas and two nights in a row. So mm-hmm. I mean, they're just as big as can be, and great dudes, and 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 very thankful that they decided to take us out because they didn't need us. You yeah. know what I mean? The shows were like sold out well before we yeah. got announced. We need to sell some more um, tickets. Get Josh and the boy. No, in. they were like, we're already sold out. Who should we take? And they were <laughs> super nice and brought us out for whatever reason. So, but, um, but we did a tour after that. Uh, so that was Australia. We did a tour, I don't know, a year or two after that in Australia. And we definitely saw a, 
a, a, a clear bump in our shows That's because cool. of them, you know? Yeah. And, and so, um, so I think those crowds were really into what we were doing. Um, uh, but with stone sour, um, well, the only thing I can say with stone sour is that we were, it was more recent. Uh, the stone sour was, was that last year maybe or a year before? I don't know. It was really, it was recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, whereas the bring these were, uh, the bring these shows were, um, a couple of years before, prior to that. So presumably I'm better at my instrument, right. better at making my sound sound the way it does. Especially at, for you know, that, so, that your current <clears throat> band. Yeah. So I, I'm presumably better at singing, better at performing, whatever, you know? And so, uh, I think that helped with the stone sour, it, it, that that's the only reason I would even barely say maybe Stone Sour Crowd reacted to us a little bit even better, um, just based on I've been know, that band for a little bit longer. And... As, soon, as soon as we'd end, I mean they would, I mean there there was a couple shows where they were like chanting our name, which oh, I was cool. just like that's fun, you yeah. know. Uh, and I think it was you know maybe just because we had been a band a little longer, people maybe were there for us as well as Stone Sour. Well, it's maybe, a unique you know what I mean? site too. Just you guys, just two of you guys up there. You know what I mean? Just yeah. crashing it around. Well, visually, so. I think that get, throws people like, wait, what? There's only two dudes. Do you have like a bass kind of pedal? I what, s- how do you how do you like supplement the sound with that? I split my signal three ways, so it comes out of my guitar, goes into a splitter. A goes to like whatever pedals I feel like that guitarist would use. Goes to a head. Goes to a cab. B goes into whatever pedals I think that guitarist would use. Pedals and then a head and then a cab and then c drops an octave down goes into a couple pedals and then bass out in front so when it works it feels real nice you know Um, does it work all the time nope um (laughs) i don't have any crew or guitar techs or anything so there's plenty of times where i'm just kind of like like, like, uh, whatever screw it so that might be a a a poignant uh reference to, to to note on the um the longer i am in this band the better I can make it's my sound, sound better yeah. because some money comes in and I'm able to try this pedal out or try that. Or some guy told me, Hey, you should check this out. Or... So there's never going <laughs> to be like a second guitar player or a bass player in 68. huh? I don't think so. I have no, I mean, you know, you look at black keys, they were two piece forever and then they became a, like a five piece sort of thing that I, I'll never say never. But for me, I, I, they, I didn't know that they became a full band. I've only seen them as a two piece. <clears throat> so, I don't know what they would consider themselves, but I've seen them live. They, there's the two dudes, and then not hidden away, but just in the back, you'll see oh, the, the guitarists yeah, and yeah. bass and stuff. But um, so I'll never say never. But I have right now the when I started '68 on the heels of the Chariot, the whole thing for me was how can I take something I'm pretty comfortable with, which is touring and playing live shows and flip it on its head? How can I, the struggle, (laughs) the thing we already talked about. How can I make it How can I make it more difficult for myself? Mm. Uh, I'll do the drums myself as well. (laughs) Yeah. And so I came to the point where I went, oh, I can play guitar. I can learn these pedals. I can learn. I didn't even know if you could split the signal like that. Mm -hmm. I I was learning all that on my own. and, and, um, And so here I am now X amount of years later and, and I've got a, a slight handle on it. And I think it's hopefully getting just better and better as the, as the years go by and as I learn more and more, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, I, I do, you know, there's times where this one's got some tremolo dun, 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 and this one's got a different thing. So it hopefully feels very <laughs> yeah, wide, great. wide, you know? And, um, and that's part of the show. That's part of, yeah, we have our songs, but that's part of hopefully the aesthetic is, how much noise can two guys make right, and, right. and not have a computer just doing it? It know, definitely sounds full. Good. I mean, like, cause I remember we saw, <clears throat> uh, the first time I saw you live, I, well, the only time tonight I'll see you live as well, but, uh, <laughs> the future. Yeah. Uh, Rockville, you guys, played oh, nice. Rockville yeah, yeah. Year, uh, last, not this past one, but the year before. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I remember just going like, wow. Like, I mean, I obviously already knew you as a showman, so mm-hmm. it wasn't like, that <clears throat> not that that didn't blow me away but just like holy crap it does kind of sound like a full band cool. up there you know what good, i mean good. so like yeah and, and it was it was a pleasurable experience watching you all do that so i will say this uh big gigantic shows that we were uh, talking about uh earlier the the 13 foot barricades yeah. and the, the rockvilles and stuff um sound wise <laughs> i have no complaints <laughs> because those shows i mean I mean, even just me and my monitor world, right. I don't hear what y'all are hearing, but in my monitors, it is massive and it just sounds so, whereas 
shows like tonight which are super cool and definitely more where i almost feel at home more um the equipment isn't as it's just good. different yeah. <laughs> it's just different and uh and i mean talking about rockville i remember the, that that one and the other florida one we do uh those specifically just they make it just sound so Great. beefy and so i remember good. the cop i remember there was like a cop just like blocking off the street like an overhang <clears> and you kind of like pointed him out during the show and i was like I wonder if that cop is like a fan of any of this stuff. Cause like, if he is, that's cool. He gets to see like he gets a one of the ticket. main stages. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was yeah. Fucking, it was weird. That's funny. I have one more question, I guess. And then we'll kind of wrap it up. Cause yeah, the show is about to start. Well, and I know, I know, long, I know yeah. JP wants to go check out all the bands. This yeah. Yeah. Tonight, They're all so. great. Um, one of your, one of the chariot songs, um, cheek. Okay. What, what made you put <clears throat> the great dictator speech okay. in there? Uh, um have you heard this speech of course it's, i mean and it's... what's weird about it is like <clears throat> i just recently had heard it prior to that album coming okay. out and me being a conspiracy guy or whatever i like gravitated toward it and i was like that's crazy that the charlie chaplin movie from like the 40s or whatever so long ago. was saying that and how like <clears throat> kind of that all already played out dude so i, I heard it and it moved me and it I, still does it's i'm telling yeah. you it still does and and i wanted to be a part of it I know that sounds insane because it's so long ago and I'm so newish, but I, I want, I, it was everything I loved and it was everything that I <clears throat> believed in and, and wanted to just, and so the moment I heard it, I was like, I think I can write something that can maybe not do it justice, but some, give it a, a bed to lay in mm-hmm. and let him do his thing. And I didn't want to recreate it. I didn't want to do my own version. I didn't want to do. I. I you can't. It, it because it came from so long ago, and because he had that foresight to talk about things that were happening then. But now it's like we didn't go anywhere positive. Right. We're still in a. You know, <laughs> we're still in the same pickle he's talking years, about. 60, um, 80 years later, or whatever. So it, what's funny? Uh, I'll tell this story. So I did the song. Um, I wrote. I wrote that song, and again, it's barely a song. It's like a, a bookend thing in yeah, yeah. a bed for him to lay in. Still, but, um, as a song, it is great, even with the beginning, <clears throat> well, thank the outro, you. and that speech inside. Thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a good package. <clears throat> I'll tell you two quick stories. One, I sent it all to the label, um, and they heard that and was like, "Oh, <laughs> we got to get released." What? Like, and um, and they were like trying to be like, "Well, you know, it probably cost too much money." Like, well, and I was like. We can't not do it. Like it, it, there's no other version. There's no other. They they had suggested ideas of just me coming up with some new stuff, and I'm like, it won't. It has to be that. So <clears throat> I wasn't there with them, but so the story goes. Uh, I, I hope I'm saying her name right. I think Dorothy might be her, his uh, great granddaughter or something like that. Um, and I, I used to know these facts really well, but I haven't had to say this story in a while. But anyway. Basically, whoever you would talk to to get Charlie Chaplin stuff sorted had no internet. So they had to <laughs> mail her something, I think, or something. They got in touch with her. They had to fly in. They had to meet with her at her house and show her. How old is this person? I think time? pretty old. Yeah, I was uh, saying. <laughs> I want to say it's either a great granddaughter or a granddaughter. So I, don't, I don't know. Again, I, I knew all this stuff uh, at the time, but I haven't said in a while but basically they had to get it approved and time wise and everything else no no internet and stuff they had to just basically fly so they met with her they showed her the thing which i was just like yeah that's not gonna work Uh, this is wonderful and she approved it and we got the full right off for it so we uh kudos to the label kudos to anyone and doing that so that's one story, which was super cool because there's, you know, uh, I mean, she may have just not even cared, but the fact that she had to listen to the chariot is so bummer. Yeah, <laughs> this nice old lady, yeah. this nice old lady had to be, She's had to sort like, out yeah, okay, that. Cool. She's like, okay, cool. or something. Will, it, will you stop it if yeah. I sign it? Then yeah, <laughs> let's get out of here. So, so that story really touched my heart and made me feel real, real nice and real special. Even though I wasn't there, I just was like, that's neat. You know, uh, the second story is, um, when we decided to part ways as the chariot, we didn't, when we wrote that record, we didn't know it was going to be the last record. Mm -hmm. We just wrote a record and then went on tour. And when we decided to part ways, 
we all it was all a very mutual thing um and we were all like pretty happy with it we were like oh let's just do that um and we had talked briefly like because I, I had a couple songs that i'd already written like i said i'm always writing so i had a couple songs that I'd already written for what would be the next album and stuff and so we were like well do we put out something new and say that and then we were just sitting there and the more we talked about it we were more like i couldn't force a better final song right. from a band i was just thinking because that. of that charlie chaplin speech nothing because of what i written but just if i all i would be trying to do whatever the song that ends the next record all i would be trying to do is top that because that is the greatest final song that a band could put out mm-hmm. in my humble opinion not the greatest song of band, but just to to say farewell right even my lyrics that I don't know them off the top of my head, but it's something about the lot, something about it's a, it's a great wrap up. Um, but with that speech mainly, I'm just, I was like, I think this is it. I don't think there's anything we do. We'll just be forcing it, you know? And because of that speech being there, I think, uh, which some people might be bummed at because they'd be like, well, we could have had more material, but, yeah. uh, but because well, now we can't n- never again. Um, <laughs> but because that was in there, it was just like, there's nothing that's going to top that. That's mm-hmm. the best way a band could, could exit the scene, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so that's that, because of that speech, we literally decided to not do anything else, just do a farewell tour and call it. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, like <clears throat> if you haven't heard that speech, I would go ahead and just <clears throat> definitely either a listen to cheat cause it's in there or just go watch the clip of it yeah, on yeah. YouTube. It's from like the whole movie is good. Or something. The, the whole movie, the I've great never seen dictator. the movie. I think it's called the great dictator or something like it's a good, good is he movie. playing? Like, is he playing like a, he's playing like a <clears throat> Hitler esque type person, right? He looks like Hitler. Okay. Uh, and I you, you yeah. have to see it, but basically when he gives that speech is sort of the whole, like, pivotal thing of of the movie do you have a name for the new album <laughs> uh i don't officially there's a pool of things it might be but i don't want to even say those just yet okay again we just finished recording so yeah. it's it's all, all um still being sort of like uh tossed around in my head because the moment it comes out as the moment it's official it's right like, right 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 might change. We're, just, we're just trying to get a little news clip off of you you know what i mean just i don't i don't want to pull bit. a kanye and change the name three times before i come out with a record <laughs> well, you know, this is so. like an active that's something i kind of feel like you could do like you as an artist not like kanye i'm but, basically kanye yeah <laughs> very little difference how is your sunday service sex ex- <laughs> extraordinary extravaganza oh, our thing. sunday services are wonderful we had one last sunday it yeah was phenomenal um but he seems like he can kind of seems to be like he could do like a project and have it be like an active project <clears> after <throat> its release because life of pablo i think he changed a couple times right yeah so like you know you guys could do that because you don't you, what you, do you mean a band thing. what do you mean by like active? changing the songs like even after it's come out yeah. or whatever I think that involve. I think when you have money, that becomes easier because you can go, Duh. because you can go, you can go. Oh, I'm gonna just change everything today, and the labels go, no, 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 and you go, oh, I'm Kanye, <laughs> I am mean, gonna do that. Yeah. Whereas if I'm like, oh, we're gonna change everything, label. My like, name's yeah. Josh, and I want to do that. The label's like, well, we spent this much money. No, you're not. Yeah. And I'll be like, fair enough, because I can't, I right, can't right, pay right. for it. So you're good to go. Uh, well, so I have to make sure everything's solid before I like you know go into it you know so before you abandon it as you so to speak well yeah before i just let it go into the world yeah. and be like whatever yeah well i guess we'll wrap it up you should probably smash that like button and subscribe if you've liked this content <laughs> like josh was telling me to tell you uh yeah and <clears throat> obviously go follow the 68 or not the 68 just 68 nope. they are 68 there you go you um, can't you don't have to you can just oh just come to a show Buy some merch. Come Just to come to a show. show. The, buy merch is cool. Just come to a show. I don't even care if you like anything or attack anything. <laughs> Coming to a show is the whole thing. That's what's fun. We'll just hang out, shake hands, get to see each other's faces. It's great. You could be drunk. You, you can, can be drunk. He, we, he is very okay with <laughs> dealing with you and recording you doing something stupid probably. I'll lean into it. It's great. <laughs> anything else before we head out of here that you <clears> want to touch I'm base golden. on? Or? Let's see. Do we cover caffeine? coca-cola bad eating habits yeah uh, we didn't healthy. really get in you know i'm glad <clears throat> we didn't really get too deep into like norma jean chariot stuff i think we did all right yeah i didn't want i mean like i already knew that you didn't want to do that i already knew that it, but it's a tricky thing for me because i love those bands i'm very proud of the thing but you don't want done. your first you don't want your but image i'm not like, i'm bad. not here to talk about right. nostalgia so much i mean or, or you know what i mean let's keep the past where it belongs and yeah. let's move forward um 
That's that's my thoughts anyway. Well, we need to get you to the ball. Yes. So uh, we'll just rag. see ending it's also as hard as like starting it. So Look, we're just, out. Just cut it. Yeah. Fade to black. Boom. Done. <laughs> <laughs>